Let's read Exodus 3, 5 again. Then he said, do not draw near this place. Take the sandals off your feet for the place where you're standing is holy ground. Do not draw near. <laughs> and this is where I started to get troubled in my heart. God has physically came down in the burning bush in the presence of Moses. And the very next thing that we read is, don't come any closer. Holiness is the reason that Moses was told, don't come any closer, stand still. I, I don't want you to come any closer. The ground that you stand on, Moses, it's holy ground. Don't come any closer. It really kind of hit me because the next thing that God tells Moses is take off your sandals. <laughs> How does taking your sandals off make you holy? Has anyone really ever thought about this? Because the problem here is genuinely holiness. But God seems to be suggesting that the act of taking off your sandals can purify and make you holy in the sight of God. And right there is a difficult one. And I can see that Charlie's already taken his shoes off. I understand that there's a humility that comes from taking off your shoes, a humility and humbling ourselves before God in the same way that when God comes, we ought to bow down and we ought to worship and we ought to give him our best. But the problem still was there with me. What is it about taking off your sandals that makes you holy? So I thought that was cool, but Lord, help me. I need to get this more because I don't want to just tell you, if you take your shoes off, you're okay. God will love you. Let's just take your shoes off. You know, God will accept it. Sometimes we have to think beyond just what we read in the Bible, but ask the question of why is this? And so I want to take us on that journey. Why is it that taking our shoes off in the presence of God is holy? He ain't wearing any shoes. In fact, am I going to take my socks off? <sighs> this is hurting me to do. He's not wearing any socks. The priest is barefoot. Now, I've done that very deliberately because you all feel as uncomfortable as what I do, don't you? Amen? Because in our culture, wearing shoes and socks protects us from being vulnerable and exposed. Many people have toes and feet that they don't want seen. Oh no, I didn't hear an amen in there. <laughs> Many people have feet that they don't want seen. But God wanted to see Moses' feet totally exposed to the elements. It was a sign of this holiness, the holy ground that he was at. Take off your shoes, leave nothing about your life covered you are on holy ground i want moses to feel my presence through his feet no leather no shoes no nothing i want him to feel my presence with all that he is and god says you know what just take off your shoes it's holy ground it represents taking off so many things that we put on to protect ourselves and to cover ourselves I was going to have an illustration, but I was in a bit of a rush this morning. I was going to pick up some stones and throw them on the floor and pretend it was a desert. And then I was going to ask Charlie to get up and to walk across them barefoot in the middle of the wilderness. <laughs> and what we were going to do is we were going to look at his face to see if he grimaces or not. Because I'm telling you this, when you walk in a desert place, I'm doing this on carpet right now. If this was a wooden floor or a tiled floor, my feet would be cold. If I did this outside, I wouldn't be very long on the pavement or on the stones or even on the grass before I'd start to be in pain. You see, when you take off your shoes and your socks and you begin to walk, all of a sudden you're careful. You take care about where you tread. Every step, every detail about your moving becomes vastly important. Why? Because your feet are so sensitive. Ever walked and trod on someone's Lego? Kids in the house. Mmm. Everyone knows how that feels. Yes, it hurts. You break a glass. You think you've got it all, but later on, a week later, you tread it. Oof! And that tiny little shard, you can't even see it with your eye. It's in your, in your foot, and you, oh, a little splinter. And it hurts. God wants Moses to take off his feet and to walk with him. 
and to be careful about the way that he walks in his life. Because guess what, Moses? I've called you into the ministry. You want to experience the presence of God. You want to draw near to God. You know what? You need to consider what you do going forward. Be holy for I, the Lord, am holy. This is the only way into the presence of God. I'm going to tell you something right now. There's a lot of people that take shortcuts to get to the presence of God. The children of Israel did it. They ran to the man of God. They ran to Moses. We know that Moses has been in the presence of the God. His face, it shines, it glows in the dark. He's got to wear a veil to cover himself. Moses looks glorious in his ways. We can go to Moses and he can tell us what God says. But what happens is that you get used to going to somebody else for the presence of God. Take off your shoes and your socks. Sometimes the worship of God has got to let you get uncomfortable. Charlie, you're going to be uncomfortable in a minute. We have got to be willing to get uncomfortable if we want to experience more of God. He will ask you to go to places and to do things that seem crazy. Imagine Moses being told to take off your shoes and your socks. Romans 10, 15, you all know the verse. How beautiful are the, of those that preach the gospel of peace and who bring glad tidings of good things. You see, the feet in the Bible are synonymous with bringing good news. You know what? You need your feet. You need your feet to carry you, to take you to places. You need your feet to walk it out. Let me tell you something about good news. Nobody believes good news that comes from the bad person. If you think somebody's evil, you ain't listening to their good news. The walk that they have enables you to believe what they are saying. Therefore, the feet of the people that are walking out that message are important. You have to live a message before you can preach it. Otherwise, no one ain't going to believe it. But guess what? When the children of Israel were journeying around the wilderness for 40 years, guess what happened to their shoes? They never wore out. Why? Because God was doing something with their walk. You see, it's not about you fixing yourself today, church. I don't want anyone to walk away from here saying, I am an unholy person. Guess what? So was Rahab. But guess what? Rahab's walk of faith and her confidence and her willingness to trust that God was going. And guess what? God saved her. It's not about what you've done. It's about who you trust and how exposed we're willing to make ourselves in his presence. But there's nothing wrong with that because God accepts us when we open ourselves up and when we say, God, I trust you, make me holy and take me to where you want me to be. And one of the most sad stories in the Bible was the fact that only one man approached the presence of God. But we're not called to do that. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4 that we boldly go before the throne of grace because we have a high priest who's taken his shoes off and his name is Jesus. We can press into God's presence because of Jesus. We don't have to stay afar. We should look at Moses and be like, I too am going to tread on holy ground and I too am going to see God do great and mighty things through my life because he's holy and he's making me holy and I trust him, I believe him and we're going on this journey together. You see, Jesus was a foot washer and some of the disciples had a problem with that. Peter turned up to Jesus and was like, <laughs> Jesus, you're not washing my feet. And Jesus has to speak to him. He says, you know what? You don't understand right now, but one day you will understand. And there's a lesson about servitude going on here. But I think there's something else going on here as well that we, don't, we sometimes miss. Jesus, the presence of God is there and they're taking their shoes and their socks off and he's inspecting the filthiest and the most dirty parts of their life. And guess what? They're believers. He's not asking this of those that were sinners. He's asking this of believers, those that have already been washed in the waters of baptism, been through the waters of baptism, those that are already clean. He says, listen, you need to wash your feet, wash one another's feet, serve one another, expose the most vulnerable parts of yourself to one another and God in heaven will forgive and will make you 
holy. I believe that at that foot washing service, these apostles were being anointed for ministry. They didn't need a burning bush moment. They had a Jesus moment. As they took off their shoes and their socks and began to wash one of his feet. And I didn't, I didn't hit the water up either, sorry, Charlie. It's freezing cold. It's okay, I'll dry them off for you. One foot at a time, please. Oh, bless you, Charlie.